Hello, my name is Alexander Michalitsyn. I'm a kernel engineer at Virtuoso. And uh, today I'm going to talk about DMQ Code 2. It's the block device driver, which provides the ability to use Code 2 images as a block device for the container needs and not only for the container needs. Uh, my co-author here, Dan Lunev, our engineering co core team engineering lead uh, at Virtuoso. Our team focused uh, on, on the Linux kernel and QEMO. Uh, first, the first question here is why do we need a block device at all? Uh, from the system containers perspective, a block device is really useful because we want to achieve a better uh, isolation between the system containers. And also we may want to tweak somehow the file system parameters inside the containers. And also we, we may want to have different file system types in different containers. Like for example, uh, we may have combined uh, solution when some of the old containers uses X4 file system and uh, newer containers use it, uses XFS file system. Another point here, and I think the most important is that the block device allows the easier implementation of snapshots uh, for the uh, file system of container for, because we snapshotting the block device as a whole. And also we, of course, can perform re online resizes and uh, size limitations for container file system three uh, just as a default because we have a block device underlying. Uh, consider the following picture where we have the three containers uh, with some trees in that containers and the loop device, uh, three loop devices are the backing storage for these containers. Uh, this picture is great, uh, but the problem here is the loop device. Loop uses the plain image format which makes the problems because it uh, has now dynamic cluster allocation mechanisms. So we're wasting a lot of space and it doesn't provide us with the ability to make snapshots. Uh, so uh, we need something uh, new here. And we have the PLOOP technology. PLOOP is a in-kernel block device driver with uh, parallels, uh, stands for parallels loop, uh, uses parallels image format and uh, this yeah this uh, image format this uh, block device driver allows us to have uh, the right tracking support and making snapshots and this is uh, currently key technology for our system open vz system containers uh, since uh, for, for many years uh, nowadays we decided to shift to step on the, another technology uh, and uh, change the image format uh, to widely used and supported uh, called QCO2. Uh, and uh, also uh, Kirill Thai, the main developer who written the initial implementation of this driver, decided to step on the device mapper framework as a basis. And this allows us to have much less code than in comparison to PLOOP device. And it's of course good for us. And uh, another point here is that uh, device mapper provides staking architecture uh, to implement really complex uh, things like the stacked backups. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Coco2 image format uh, and the uh, features which is provided uh, by default with this format. It's the snapshots. Uh, and backing files. Uh, so you can use several images for different layers of your uh, block device. And also of course, dynamic cluster allocation, which is the default for this format. And uh, the, here in this picture, we can see the general structure of QCO2 file. Uh, in the first block, we can see the QCO2 header, which contains the general information like size, like position, uh, like shift uh, of L1 table in the image, like position of rip counter table. And uh, of course, we can see here L1 and L2 tables and data clusters. Data clusters marked green as a sign that this 
uh, clusters available for the guest. Uh, guest here is because we're talking not only about VMs, but also about containers. And uh, it's worth to mention that ref counters is used for L1 tables, or L2 tables, I'm sorry, and also data clusters uh, to, for the snapshot needs. Uh, here we uh, can see the general scheme of a mapping between uh, cluster virtual addresses uh, for the, at the block device level and uh, addresses or shifts inside the image. Um, so the L1 and L2 table is just the tables and uh, we indexing the cells in these tables and these indexes is just the part of the address of the virtual address of the cluster. So we have some cluster address, we're splitting it to the parts and we can use first part as the image for the L1 table and second part for the uh, shift in L2 table. And using this, we can navigate through this scheme and uh, find the particular cluster in the image. Uh, and uh, that's all uh, about the format itself. And uh, we can also pay some attention to features which it provides is the, uh, Right, uh, is it, of course it's snapshots, it's subclusters, which is a quite new feature, maybe a few years ago it was introduced, but it's also supported by our driver and cluster compression, which may be really useful if you're using the backing files for the storing the data. Uh, lazy L2 tables allocation, unfortunately we don't support it yet, but uh, we have, possibly we have a plan for it. And yes, backing files. Uh, let's uh, say a few words about the device mapper framework. Is device mapper is a great uh, thing in Linux kernel, which provides an extensive uh, API for virtual block devices implementation. Uh, it uh, allows us to choose between two approaches for the block device uh, called bio-based approach and request-based. Or there are also hybrid uh, block uh, target drivers, but uh, we are speaking in our case, it's the request-based. The difference between these approaches is that the API function which is used and the uh, efficiency. If we're talking about bio-based uh, approach, in this case, um, our block device driver, our device mapper target driver receives the each BIOS separately and uh, maps and uh, process them separately. But if we are talking about the uh, request based, in this case, we are uh, working after the uh, after request queue is glued. So the struct request contains a list of uh, struct BIOS. And uh, this means that scheduler, IOS scheduler on already uh, processed our BIOS and uh, possibly plugs them into the request. And this may be quite more optimal uh, in comparison to BIO-based. That's why we choose this way. And also device mapper provides the IO suspend resume infrastructure. And for example, in our driver, to provide the suspend, we just, uh, in our implemented callbacks, we are flushing our pending IOS, write all kickall to image top layer metadata. And then when we need to resume the device, we just reload all, reload all metadata from the disk. Between this, we can uh, safely modify the kickall to image from the user space, for example, using QEMO EMG2. Uh, now, now we can see this approach uh, at this slide. Uh, uh, snapshot creation in q 2 is just uh, a, as simple as creating the L1 table copy uh, and also L2 tables and cluster ref counts should be increased by one in this case. And snapshot switch is just effectively L1 table switch. Uh, usage of the snapshot engine is simple. 
it's shown on this slide. As you can see, we just uh, suspending EO uh, and all actions that I was described earlier uh, performs here. And then we just creating a snapshot using QMEMG tool. And then we resume the IO and resume the device. And another important thing is the so-called uh, backward merge and forward merge. Uh, backward merge allows you to uh, copy all the all changed clusters from the top layer image to the uh, to the previous layer. layer. Uh, like if you have, for example, image and and backing file, all changed clusters will be copied to the backing file, and top layer image gets clean from this side. And uh, we have merge backward support in the kernel, and we have uh, pull support or uh, forward merge support uh, from the user space. It's done by using switching to call to wires. And also we have a driver for called DM backup, DM push backup. Uh, this driver allows to uh, control the writes for the uh, for the device from the container and it's the stacked device so it's uh, stacked on top of dm code 2 layer and all io from the file system comes to this uh, driver at first and then and then translates to the uh, dm code 2 io uh, and uh, it provides the blocking notification for writes and the user space Acknowledge each write, and uh, after that, this pending IO will be submitted to the uh, to the DM code to lawyer. Here we can see this quite easy picture. <laughs> uh, this picture uh, there are some maybe uh, errors here because here we have DM DMP loop, but yeah, we have DMP loop too, but uh, today we're speaking about DMQ code too. It's not so important. Uh, general scheme is quite useful because we have VM or container and we have some IOS getting uh, submitted to these devices. And uh, we also have the right notification on this side when we're processing submitting BIOS. And uh, the backup utility, which is a user space utility, just uh, makes some using some kernel interface write ACK for the clusters, and this uh, EOS gets submitted to the uh, particular block device, like DM Coco 2 or DMP loop or something similar, something another. And yes, uh, here we have QM and BD server, but yeah, it's not so important. Uh, what about QM and BD and why we are not trying to use this uh, as a driver? Uh, as, as far as we know, uh, the kernel provides the in-kernel driver for network block devices and QM and BD is just a user space tool which uh, uses this, utilizes this driver and uh, allows us to use go to images with this and provides these images as a block devices. And of course we can run container on it, on this basis, but um, there is a problem because the QM and BD is too slow. And we on our production, cust customer production workloads, we have like a 500 or thousand of system containers. And these containers may contain uh, a lot of different software like a Docker container or even Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes uh, nodes and that's a problem because all of all of them uh, uh, submits a lot of uh, bio and uh, of course QM and BD in this case it's a bottleneck another risk for us is just uh, connected with with the, the fact that QM and BD is the user space driver so it means that if we have a problem with uh, like memory over commit, and uh, we have memory over commit in a lot of cases. Uh, this uh, may lead to the deadlocks 
uh, in this daemon server and makes the whole system unresponsive and the, all the containers getting down. Uh, another interesting application for this is the LXC because LXC project also aims to provide the system containers like uh, in, from infrastructure needs or something like that. And uh, the LXC team guys uh, provides a lot of options for us uh, for storage, for storage options for us like loop device, directory, better FS or LVM. And uh, it looks like the MCO2 may be a good alternative to loop device a driver here because it provides a higher resolution level and it also allows us to have the snapshots and so on uh, and yet another application for this thing is the virtual bill k driver which was developed by andrew jachenko recently and this driver allows to uh increase density and improves performance for the virtual machines for the qm virtual machines and uh, because we trying to get rid of the uh, a lot of syscalls between user space and the kernel because as we as far as we know the qm or virtual are handled in the user space and on this picture we can see the the request structure and how this working and uh, virtual blk driver allows us to have scheme like that just because we don't need to uh, copy request to user, user space and uh, reach the user space we can do everything in the kernel another useful feature here is that the virtual blk allows us to have multiple threads for IO, uh, which is also valuable, of course. Here we can see some uh, numbers, some results for this framework. As we can see, it's quite good. So, okay, I think that we are ready to, to, to answer your questions. Uh, thanks, thank you guys for listening.